Okay, uh, this PowerPoint is available to you in module three. Module three, we start talking about recipe and recipe cards. So first of all, there are many different types of menus. And this PowerPoint from the beginning talks about classical menus. Classical menus, when they were written and designed, had many courses. So there was an appetizer course, a cheese course, a fish course, an entree, entremetier, uh, intermezzo, which is a uh, sorbet or something that cleanses your palate. A lot of people today call that a mousse bouche. A mousse bouche might be a pre course where they give you a plate. A mousse bouche means to uh, uh, jump in your mouth or create the sensations in your mouth. Um, so classically, there's many courses. Now, in modern cuisine, you know that menus are broken up to uh, different types of ethnic and regional cuisine. So you could have a soup, a salad, a starter. You could have a one course, uh, like a tapas or uh, an egg roll. That's just a one course item that you eat with your finger. Then you could go into a sandwich, which most of our um, cafe style bistros today have various sandwiches, burgers, a pasta dish, a seafood dish, um, salads, then going into a dessert. But classically, we had a method so it wasn't like today's modern menus where you had many different selections and many different eth ethnic restaurants. Traditionally and classically, it was a preset or prefix meal. And if it wasn't a prefix meal, prefix means you would get automatically get this course of fish, this course of a salad, this course of an entree. And there wasn't necessarily a selection. The chef wrote the menu and um, served it. You may have had a selection of an entree, a fish, a beef, a chicken, um, or you may have had a selection of a soup. So in modern times, things have changed. So before you can cost out recipes or cost out a menu, you have to know what type of menu you wanna have. Is it gonna be ethnic? Is it gonna be regional? Is it gonna be family, American, mom, pop? There are so many different variations in America and that's what makes us different from other people. So if we look at building the menu, you go from the classical to the modern, you can see there are different courses and not all rules apply. So you could be just a sushi restaurant doing variations of sushi. Um, you could be a burger restaurant. Um, you could be a sandwich restaurant. You could be a quick service, which means that it's uh, you go in, you pick up the food, you leave or curb service, which is what we're seeing more because of the COVID outbreak. You go in, the food is prepared, your entrees are ready, and then you take them out. So first of all, you have to determine what your ethnicity and what type of restaurant you're going to be. And then you start building your flavor profiles. We're gonna discuss this more when we get into the labs. So when you design your menus, you wanna talk about appearance, contrast, plate presentation, what starch or veg goes on a plate. Uh, if you're doing a burger or a sandwich, what are the ingredients, the toppings, et cetera. Then you have to um, take the menu and you have to look at the kitchen. Most of you are not going to be designing or building a kitchen from scratch. So when you go in today, we're gonna walk around the kitchen a little bit. Uh, when you go into a kitchen, you have to see, is there a fry station? Is there a broiler station? Is there a saute? Is there a grill or a broiler? Is there an oven convection, oven conventional? Uh, is there a bakery? Is there a cold area? So if you don't know what is in your kitchen, you don't know what station the food comes off, you can't design the menu accordingly. A lot of restaurant tours and owners have no experience in the restaurant industry. It's everyone's dream to own a restaurant. Families, uh, professional athletes, musicians, actors, actresses, they've all wanted to have restaurants. And you coming to culinary or a hospitality school, you may want to own a restaurant. So you got to go in and see what type of equipment is. Now, can you replace equipment if it's in your budget, if it's in your business plan? Um, you have to look at what the cost of the equipment is and are there connections? Gas, LP gas, which is uh, tank gas, natural gas is electric. Believe it or not, some places out in certain areas, there is no um, uh, natural gas and people don't want to use bottle or LP gas, so they go with electric. 
your, some of your cruise lines and all your ships are electric because of safety hazards and concerns. So what type of cooking methods you have, then, then you look at what you have and then you design your menu accordingly. It's very important to know because many of you are gonna take off, take over restaurants and the owner is gonna say, I cannot get the food out of the kitchen. My chefs can't get it out. First thing you gotta do is look at your menu. How large is the menu? Look at the kitchen. Is the menu relative to the equipment and the professional staff in the kitchen? So the other, the other thing, uh, that's where on the slide 15, where it says um, kitchen limitations, uh, you gotta look at the capacity of the equipment and the plan. Personal limitation means, well, if I'm gonna open up a fine dining establishment, I'm not going to hire quick service people to uh, from you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, um, those type of establishments and put them in a fine dining area to cook food because they're not gonna have the experience. And experience means you have to butcher, you have to bake, you have to cook foods in a way where you don't want any waste. So in quick service, a lot of the food is already prepared or you're just griddling or frying, okay? So from there, you go through, design your menu and you look at your HACCP plan, hazardous analysis, critical control point, your surf safe uh, plan to see, do I have the capacity of refrigeration and storage? Uh, you, menus like um, Cheesecake Factory, they're massive menus. And most people couldn't produce those menus and you wouldn't have the kitchen space to do that or the storage. The key thing is to try to use as little ingredients uh, in a menu and cross utilize them if you can. Uh, that doesn't mean you want like mushrooms on everything. It means that um, if I have mushrooms on a sandwich and I have to do an event and a banquet, well, I can do a mushroom sauce or I can do a mushroom soup, those type of things so that you're saving on your cost and utilization. So don't bring in one specific ingredient. It's only gonna be used in one recipe, but don't use that same ingredient on many recipes, okay? So um, no terminology, and there are many books out there and websites that give you menu terminology and know, you know what is homemade, what does it have to mean, um, you know, baked, uh, oven fresh, know the terminology in every state, it's really different. Uh, recipes. And this is what we're going to talk about next after we go through the slide. We're going to talk about standard recipes and formats. There are a couple reasons why you use recipes. First, it's so you know what to purchase and buy from your menu. You write the menu, then you take the recipes for each dish. Then you start a production and purchasing list. The purchasing list, you'll have dairy. Do I need milk, half and half eggs, cheese? You need produce. Do I need lettuce? carrots, tomatoes, onions, mushrooms. You need dry goods. Dry goods would be er, uh, spices, um, canned goods, canned like a bean or spaghettis, pastas, anything like that. I need meat. So then the meat, you categorize it as beef, chicken, fish, shellfish, uh, or poultry, or lamb, eel, venison, whatever that meat is, you have to break it down. Then you write your recipe accordingly. So when you write the recipe, everything starts with the menu and an establishment. Establishments and restaurants are made and broken by the menu because menu drives food costs, menu drives labor costs and uh, production. Many of you, when you watch um, Chef Ramsey, Gordon Ramsey, when he goes into a restaurant and he goes to fix the restaurant, they're having a lot of issues all of it goes to the menus. And you notice when he works with that restaurant and he corrects the menus, he limits it. He goes into some key items. Like if he does a burger, it's gonna be one burger, it's gonna be a good burger. If he does a pasta, it might be one pasta, but it's gonna be a good one. And he's not gonna do like six variations of pasta because your cooks get confused and you can't get it off the line. All right, so standard recipes, and this is what we're gonna talk about uh, next. And I'm gonna go through our standard recipe card, and that's where I'm gonna end these slides right now.
Okay, so this is a costing sheet. This is in your week three model, I mean, mod modular three, model three. You go down to the assignment where it says costing and you download this. This is the standard template. Now, when you use this sheet, I'm going to go over this in lab. So right now you can just listen. And then when we go into lab, we'll discuss it in depth. So everyone is going to use this sheet when they submit a recipe for every class starting now. So if you have a recipe that's a family recipe, you want to try it, you're not going to give me a piece of notebook paper or uh, a recipe uh, index card or a Word document. I want it on this Excel spreadsheet. You do not have to worry about costing when you get into food and beverage purchasing, you'll do more costing. For now, what I want you to do is write where it says ingredients, you list all of the ingredients. Then you have to put weight, meaning <clears throat> is it a, if it's chicken, it's by pound. Volume, volume is measurable. So is it going to be uh, liquid? So how many cups, how many ounces, those kind of things. And then the cost of the unit, the yield, don't worry about any of that. Right now, I want the ingredient. How much? Is it by weight or is it by volume? And if it's by each or if it's uh, herbs and seasonings, you just, you just change it. You put how many sprigs, how many bunches. Um, if it's chopped, you put tablespoon, teaspoon, half a cup. That's all I want right now. Okay, then on the right side, you see where it says method of preparation. On the right side, what you're going to do is you're going to take the method of prep. Now the method of preparation, you can cut and paste from your document, or if it's a family recipe, you type it in. The method of prep, you're going to learn as time goes on how to write. Good example is to use our textbook from Gislin, Professional Cooking, the ninth edition, and read and look how the recipes are written. Now, if you're using a recipe from Gislin, I will show you in class uh, how we can convert from the Gislin textbook. Please make sure your mics are uh, muted, please. We'll go from the Gislin textbook and then um, we will cut and paste it or we'll e export it. In Gislin, there is a way if you're using the ebook to put the ingredients in, put the method in and export the item.